A men's national team from Manchester, England. Presented by Nike Plus. In a seasonably cool day in Manchester, just 59 degrees. As we approach tip-off, it's the third game for the USA's pre-Olympic tour tonight taking on Great Britain after wins against the Dominican Republic and Brazil. Time now for our Prime to Perform, brought to you by Gatorade. And a spotlight look at LeBron James leading the way for the United States against Brazil a few nights ago in Washington, D.C. LeBron with a strong second half and ending up with 30 points to go along with six rebounds. Kevin Durant did his share of the heavy lifting as well in the previous game against the Dominican Republic. He had 24 points, most of those coming on three balls. He ended up also with 10 rebounds. Mark Jones along with Fran Fraschilla. Fran, Kevin Durant continues to be a key cog for this team. Well, this is the third, the guy that's been uh, the three-time NBA scoring leader, Mark, but just as importantly, he understands international basketball very well. He's getting very comfortable with the rules, the game. Remember, he's coming off that World Championship MVP in 2010. LeBron James turned it up at both ends of the court in that game in Washington, D.C. against Brazil. Well, what else is new? LeBron James, not only is, is he arguably maybe the best player in the world right now, but this will be his 52nd contest representing Team USA, another guy comfortable with FIBA basketball. He was voted the most outstanding player of that game against Brazil in D.C. Here's a look at the numbers after two exhibition games. The number, friend, that really jumps off the page at you, the three-point shooting by both these guys. Well, both of these guys, remember, the line is shorter in FIBA by a foot and a half. Very comfortable, almost a mid-range jumper for both of those tremendous players. Both of them shooting well above 50% from the field as well. A lot of excitement in Great Britain as they head toward the Olympics for the first time in 64 years. Right now, across the way to Cindy, Cindy Brunson. Cindy? Thanks so much, Mark. Appreciate it here in the National Team Studios. I'm sharing the anchor desk with Jalen Rose. He knows a little something, something about basketball, right? I play one or two days. Are you going to sing? That's what I want to know. Possibly. I love when you sing. <laughs> Lots to sing about as far as praises are concerned when we talk about Team USA's win over Brazil. They eked it out in the end. It was 11 points. LeBron James stepped up big. So did um, Kevin Durant for a little bit. James Harden still struggling. As you look at this team on a whole, as they get ready to face Great Britain, what is a weakness that needs to be shored up? The USA has some of the best athletes that the game has seen. LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant. The key is going to be the three-point shot. Six for 24 in the previous game, shot 40% from the floor. Here you see Darren Williams in a pick and roll situation. Some things in life you got to live with. Brazil <laughs> had three guys in the paint allowing the USA to take the three point shot, didn't knock it down. Here you see in transition, Kevin Durant is a very good shooter, but look at all of that space that's not being occupied. One shot and done in most situations, he misses. Now when you get the ball movement, give up a good shot to get a better shot, get the hockey assist. Kobe Bryant against the zone, knocks down the three in the corner. All about balance. They had 11 assists and 10 turnovers. Ball movement like you saw in the previous play, that's what this team is going to be able to thrive if they're able to do it. And when they were struggling early against Brazil, it was the defense that was ratcheted up. I remember Kobe Bryant, a couple of quick steals, and then everything started to run smoothly. What has to happen on the defensive end for Team USA today? Beyond Tyson Chandler, who's a seven-footer defensive player of the year in the NBA, when he goes out of the game, Kevin Durant now is playing center. We only had two block shots, so now we have to move our hands, move our feet. 19 big steals, create open floor situations where you get transition three on twos, two on ones, run outs, dunks, layups, and now those warm up jump shots that we talked about in the previous footage become a lot easier to make. Well, three time defensive player of the year, Dwight Howard, knows a little something about getting defensive, but he's just watching the national team play and prepare for the Olympics. Of course, the trade rumors continue to circulate about the Cavaliers and the Magic and the Lakers trying to get Dwight Mayer out of Orlando and perhaps West. Your thoughts? Dwight Howard, do whatever you can to get to Los Angeles immediately. Mm. I saw you champagneing and campaigning at the Dodgers game. Okay. Well, you live out there in the summer. Kobe Bryant, Steve Nash. Play under the history. George Mike and Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Shaquille O'Neal. Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity to make that happen, make it happen. They're going to need it also from a defensive standpoint because he has the mobility and the agility to contest shots, erase shots, block shots, get out in transition to help Steve Nash in particular 
on the defensive end when he has to play against Chris Paul, Tony Parker, mm -hmm. Russell Westbrook, players that like to get to the basket and finish. Definitely something to keep an eye on. We are also on the lookout for Jeremy Lin. He will be introduced as a new member of the Houston Rockets this afternoon. It's something you can see at 5 o'clock Eastern on SportsCenter on the ESPN News Network. Again, Jeremy Lin saying, hello, world, I'm here. Hello, world. Is Kobe going to get a second gold medal in England? He's going to do his best to improve his field goal shooting percentage as we get ready for the game against Great Britain. That's next. Enjoy. ESPN's coverage of the USA men's national team is presented by Nike Plus Basketball, Game on World, and in part by Gatorade. Gatorade knows it all begins within. Win from within. And Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Chester Arena, it's game three of the USA's pre-Olympic tour. Today taking on Great Britain. We're in Manchester, England, and the United States in their game against Brazil, Fran Fraschilla. Defense sparked the comeback. Absolutely, Mark. With no real shot blockers besides Tyson Chandler, they're going to have to get it done with their quickness, their athleticism, and their defensive versatility. And that's exactly what happened against Brazil after the slow start. They turned it up, they turned Brazil over, and it led to easy baskets. Going to be one of their constants throughout this Olympic. There's a look at the final hustle stats, 30 rebounds, 19 steals, and all those points off of turnovers. Oh, absolutely, and that's how this team will have to play on the defensive end. They did a terrific job against Brazil in the final three quarters of that game, giving up only 42 points. And this was a Brazilian team, friend, that you've said uh, has some pretty good ball handlers in the backcourt. Meanwhile, the head coach of the Great Britain squad is Chris Finch. Some of you may recognize him as an assistant coach with the Houston Rockets, former Division three All-American as a player. And one of his uh, key cogs is a very recognizable face with the Chicago Bulls, Luol Deng. First time NBA All-Star this past season, had one of his best years ever. And in the 2011 Eurobasket, averaged almost 25 points a game. He is the guy that Great Britain is gonna hang their hat on. Time now for our Nike Starting lineups and Fran a bit of a change in the USA starting lineup today with Kevin Durant and Darren Williams in for Carmelo Anthony and Chris Paul. Well I talked to the coaching staff of Team USA yesterday they said they feel they have seven starters Durant and Williams go into the lineup. Let's see if that shakes things up as uh, Coach K looking for that right combination. Nate Renking Mike Lindsley Lou Aldang who we saw a few moments ago Joel Freeland will be joining the Portland Trailblazers in a couple of months and Pops Mensa Bonsu another NBA player that a lot of you might be familiar with the starting five for Great Britain and Mike Krzyzewski now 51 and 1 as USA Basketball senior men's national team head coach that lone loss coming back in 2006 his first year effectively on the job. Now when you talk about Coach K, you're talking about a guy with uh, four NCAA titles heading towards 1,000 NCAA wins and growing very comfortable as the coach of Team USA over the past six seasons. Now as we look at uh, the Great Britain squad, their head coach, uh, Chris Finch, saying earlier in a press conference that I expect some of our guys to be very excited and, and even a little bit awestruck but that should wear off after a couple of minutes. Well it's interesting about Great Britain much like their women's team they have a heavy dose of inner of NCAA flavor 10 of the 12 players on the roster have played for colleges in the United States. They know the Kobe Bryant's the LeBron James's and the Kevin Durant's all too well. They're expecting a sellout crowd of close to 18,000 here at Manchester Arena today. For this battle between the United States and Great Britain, Great Britain's basketball program really on the rise of late as Kevin Durant gets set to make his first appearance in the starting lineup for USA Basketball. Now let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for the USA while we have a quick moment before the tip. Don't forget that they'll play against Argentina, one of the medal hopefuls in Great Britain coming up in the Olympics, Sunday at 12 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 Pacific. And then they'll wrap up their five game exhibition tour in a game in Barcelona Tuesday against Spain. Argentina will be in their pool in the Olympics, Spain in the other pool. 
I don't expect them to see Spain until the semifinals or more likely the finals if Team USA advances that far. Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Darren Williams, Tyson Chandler, and Kevin Durant, the NBA scoring champion, the starting five tonight for USA basketball. Little Great Britain coming off a, a very impressive win, a victory against Portugal in their last game. And we are underway. Did you hear that Rocky music in the yes. background? <laughs> Poised and ready for a Rocky-like upset, perhaps. On the lob, first play out of the gate. Tyson Chandler looking for the foul, doesn't get it. Back at the other end, the bucket good by Joel Freeland. And Great Britain with an early lead. Joel Freeland, a young man, as you mentioned, the number one pick, 30th pick in the first round, 2006. A lot of international experience, only 25. He'll join the Blazers this year. Kevin Durant's long jumper off the mark. We see another three-pointer early in the game by the USA and Durant commits the foul. Nice leak out that time by Great Britain. That was Pops Mensa Bonsu at the other end. Well, two leak outs in a row, one leading to the Freeland basket. And here you see the foul on Pops Mensa Bonsu, the young man that played at George Washington University in the Atlantic 10 and had a very, very good career for Carl Hobbs, the head coach there at the time he played. Rankings jumper off the mark, rebounded by LeBron James. Friend, we were looking at the lineup for Great Britain a little bit earlier. They've got a lot of size, and size one of the perceived deficiencies of this USA team. Well, in order to take advantage of it on the offensive end, Mark, they're going to have to take care of the basketball. Durant with the hammer slams it down for the first bucket. I would expect Kevin Durant to get out to a quick start. Coach K experimenting with him as their sixth man. Paid off in that first game against the Dominican Republic. Lou Deng inside had it knocked away. And here's Kobe Bryant. It's a three on two for the United States. Chandler gives it back to Kobe. Good ball movement, three ball on the way and Darren Williams knocks down the jumper. We saw the United States take a an inordinate amount of threes in that Brazil game, and it didn't quite work out early, Frank. No, it, it didn't. They, they certainly packed the lane in. I think Team USA's job today is to spread the floor, get out in transition, but you see Pops Mensabatsu getting all the way to the rim. Mensabatsu, you mentioned him playing at George Washington collegiately in the United States. Played for the Dallas Mavericks for a couple of years, drafted by them. Spent some time most recently in the NBA with the New Orleans Hornets in the 2010-2011 season and pops at the free throw line. Pops uh, currently playing uh, for Besiktas in Turkey. Yep. And that's the team that played that Darren Williams played on last uh, early last season during the NBA lockout. In fact, I believe they retired his jersey. You know, he yep. came in. He was a real professional. They really took a liking to him in Istanbul and turned out well for Darren Williams. Certainly turned out well financially this spring as he signed that long-term deal with the Brooklyn Nets. Sure did. Two-point lead here just underway in the first quarter. Remember, FIBA basketball is four 10-minute quarters as opposed to the 12-minute games we're used to seeing. Nice pass by LeBron to Durant. And Durant still cold from downtown. This time drives it in. Missing the slam and looking for the foul. And a turnover by Renking. An up and down game. And Durant missing again. Now it looked like the ball slipped out of his hands, but two, twice now they've looked back at the officials and you got to play through that stuff. We've already seen how physical FIBA basketball is. They've left a lot of points at the rim and off the board like they did against Brazil. Here's Kobe Bryant wheeling. And Bryant draws the foul on the play, and Kobe will go to the free throw line. Take a look. Kobe posting up Mike Lensley, young man who played his college basketball at Wofford in South Carolina for Coach Mike Young in the Southern Conference. Kobe goes to the foul line for the United States. Bryant looking for his second Olympic gold medal. And if you remember back to that really monumental, memorable game against Spain in the 2008 Olympic gold medal match, Kobe Bryant made a lot of the key baskets down the stretch, hit that four-point play, drawing the foul from Rudy Fernandez, and 
Before that, just a few moments before that, a key runner in the lane. Speaking with Nate McMillan, the assistant coach for the USA team a little bit ago, and he was telling me that he honestly believes that Kobe almost is very casual until it really, really, really means something. And that's when he really locks in. Uh, makes perfect sense. He's been in so many pressure situations in that long career. Four-point lead for the United States. Here's Renkin out top. Good deny defense by Durant. Knocks it out of bounds. It's early, Mark, but I can tell you this. Just, just you know, you can look at these guys courtside. You can tell Team USA has overwhelmingly more athleticism on the floor right now. I'd be really surprised, especially in the backcourt, if Great Britain can keep up with what could be solid pressure defense. And Sabansu to Freeland. And there's the shot clock violation, a uh, function of that athleticism you talked oh, about. Absolutely. Friend. That's a third turnover already for Great Britain. Team USA has Tyson Chandler at the rim, but where they'll really butter their bread in Olympic play will be the versatility on the defensive end, the ball pressure. You'll see guys like Westbrook and James and Kobe Bryant get out into those passing lanes, and it'll make it tough for a team with uh, the backcourt of, uh, like Great Britain, that really doesn't have the kind of answers that Argentina and Spain will have. And speaking of the backcourt for Great Britain, Andrew Lawrence, who's going to be a senior next year at the College of Charleston, checks into the ball game. Here's LeBron working against Freeland. I think anybody would call that a mismatch. LeBron settles for the jumper, though. And that's going to be ruled out of bounds over the top of the backboard. Great Britain basketball. Joel Freeland's a guy that came to basketball late as a 16-year-old in, in the town of Farnham, which is about 45 minutes southwest of London, and signed by a Spanish club, played the last few years in the ACB, and I think uh, the new general manager of the Portland Tra Trailblazers, Neil Olshi, is very excited about having him a part of their program. And Rankin, meanwhile, knocks in the baseline three to bring Great Britain to within one. Great thrill for that young guy. Kent State product. 16 years he's played professionally in Europe. Here's Williams, and now Bryant with the post up on Rankin. Good ball movement. Durant draws the contact and won. Kevin Durant put it on the deck and got to the bucket. Well, you got the feeling, Mark. Durant, as you mentioned, left something on the table on a couple of those early plays. This time he went with force to the rim, and... Joel Freeland never got really set in terms of being able to take Duran on. Think about how times have changed since 2008 for this guy, uh, Kevin Durant, friend. He wasn't quite good enough in 2008 to be on this team. He was on that select group of players, and uh, now he figures to be one of the linchpins of this year's edition of the Olympic team. Well, I think it's a great point, Mark. Remember, he was the go-to guy on the uh, world championship team in 2010. Nobody, I don't think anybody who played on the Olympic team in 08 actually played in 2010. It was a whole new mix of players. So you, took, you look at guys like Love and Westbrook and Durant and Chandler, they all got a chance to really shine in 2010. There's a great pool here right now, Team USA players. Well, the new starters for the United States, Fran, have scored seven of their nine points. LeBron gets that rebound, taking it off the rim. Williams with the extra pass to Kobe. Kobe with a sweet ball fake, and the jumper's good. Now and Bryant gives them a five-point lead. They're just learning about basketball in Great Britain as they try to grow the sport, but they know the name Kobe Bryant. And Andrew Lawrence just got a lesson from Darren Williams on ball pressure. Nice move here by Kobe. Uh, you've seen this about 10,000 times before, huh? right? <laughs> Nate Ranking, young guy out of Galleon, Ohio. I say young, he's 38 now, you know, but he's older than Kobe. <laughs> LeBron covered by Deng. And they're trying to spread the floor, go pick and roll. There's the lob. Well, it was supposed to be a lob, but it went in. <laughs> LeBron will take it anyway. And the looks like they're going to give the bucket to Tyson Chandler, or at least that's what the public address announcer said. A 6 to nothing USA run. And Tyson Chandler just punches that into the third row. 
Now Andrew Lawrence getting a little lesson. The young man is only one of two players in the Olympic Games that still have college eligibility. He's at the College of Charleston, you mentioned, and Matthew Delavadova of St. Mary's and the Australian Olympic team. He's the not, other. He's not facing anybody like Tyson Chandler in the at Southern, Wofford this year. Yeah, in the Southern Conference, you're right. <laughs> still a talented player, though. Pops Mensa Bonsu inside with a slam. He had nine points and six rebounds and five steals in that win against Portugal. One of two in a row as Chris Paul now comes into the ball game for the United States. Kobe wasn't expecting the lob pass. Dang to Pops. Oh, yeah. And Mensa Bonsu makes it a three-point game. He's got five. Now, you said before we came on the air, we'll probably see two or three high-flying Pops Mensa Bonsu dunks. And we've already seen two of them, Mark. Kobe Bryant matched up against Renking. Kobe fouled by Mensa Bonsu. With 4.22 to go, remember in FIBA basketball, five fouls, and then they shoot the penalty. Time out on the floor. More when we come back to Manchester. Then a look at the upcoming USA men's national team schedule in the Olympics. They are in Pool A along with France, Tunisia, Nigeria, Lithuania, and Argentina. Friend, most would expect them to go undefeated again in pool play at least, right? Well, I think so. And if you're looking at pool play, you notice that the top four teams in each pool of six will advance to the uh, knockout round. And uh, so Team USA will see Argentina in their pool and uh, Spain on the other side in Pool B. Lithuania and Argentina were late additions in the qualification tournament down in Venezuela. And now a little bit of a zone look by Great Britain, friend. Yep, good for Team USA to see if they can recognize and adjust. You see they get the ball to LeBron James right at the foul line. And what you want to do against that type of zone, Mark, is just create an opportunity for a mismatch. LeBron James with the speed, size, and strength able to get to the rim versus the middle of that zone. I can remember speaking with Luis Scola of Argentina a couple of years ago in wake of the 2008 Olympics, and I asked him who was the most impressive player that he saw in that USA squad, and he said by far it was LeBron. I said, why? He said, because LeBron, he can play one, he can play two, he can play three, he can play four, and five. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if you see LeBron guarding guys like Scola and the Gasol brothers uh, if they happen to need an Olympic play. LeBron James fresh off an NBA championship as a member of the Miami Heat. And the NBA Finals MVP as well with an extraordinary run through the playoffs. Winning his first NBA championship at 27 years old. People forget in all the comparisons that have been made with he and Michael Jordan. Michael was just 28 when he won his first championship. LeBron 27. He's got five more to go. Mark. Yes, it's a long way. <laughs> Approaching four minutes to go here in Manchester in the first quarter. Here's Lou Dang. Dang with a nice move to the bucket. Great to see. Lou Dang, his family repatriated from the Sudan through Egypt. Very proud of representing Great Britain because he feels the country took he, his mom and dad, and his eight siblings in. Andrew Lawrence, the collegian guarding LeBron. Good ball movement. Durant from his OKC teammate Westbrook. And he knocks down the three. You notice, Mark, that LeBron is playing de facto point guard right now. A role that he's very used to with the Miami Heat. Six-point lead. Ranking pulls up. Rebound to Lawrence. Thought about it. Dang left wide open. And you see that shorter three-point shot. Lou Dang doesn't take a lot of threes with the Chicago Bulls, but he knocked that one down. That's going to be a foul against Andrew Lawrence. You know, Mike Krzyzewski said coming into the game and speaking with him that, hey, we're in Manchester, England. We're in a place that's used to championships, high level of performances, albeit maybe on the soccer side of the ledger <laughs> with Manchester United and Manchester City, the EPL soccer champs this year. But this is going to give us a good chance to get used to the atmosphere when we come back. Now, very much so. You know, they're going to be back here in London Guess London's maybe three and a half hours from here by car and uh, just getting acclimated to the weather, maybe the food a little bit. 
Fran, as a coach, how do you get your players used to an environment after traveling so long and so far and with all the different activities these guys have had to do? Well, you notice they got here and they got right back on the practice floor. And uh, you want to just kind of make it as normal as possible. And uh, you don't want to talk about the travel too much. You just want to, your body acclimates after about 48 hours. I'll Westbrook say, almost comes up with a steal. Have we seen Westbrook terrorize some guys? That's not the guy you want to bring the ball up. No, against. no, that's one you go, hey, you bring it up, Mark. <laughs> I'm going to take a break. Russell Westbrook had about three steals in the open court against Brazil against some guards that are pretty good pretty with the good. basketball. Absolutely. Remember Ronald Ramon of Dominican Republic who played yeah. at Pitt. Great Britain only trailing by four. Good defense once again by Carmelo Anthony. Oh, nice pass. In transition, Westbrook with the hammer. Boy, Andre Iguodala has been so valuable to this team in the early going first two-plus games. But he did this in 2010 in Istanbul for Mike Krzyzewski. On the drive, and that's going to be another foul. Mensa Bonsu fouled by Kevin Love. That's going to be the first foul on Love. Let's talk about Kevin Love a little bit, friend. He hasn't gotten a lot of minutes in the first two games. Where do you think his arc goes from here? I'm a little surprised by that. You see, dang, uh, who's that? Pops gets to the rim and draws the foul on Love. But, I, you know, I think Kevin Love's game is tailor-made for international basketball, as you see that great touch pass by Iguodala, because he's strong enough to hold his own inside. He can rebound the ball, and he's an effective player away from the basket. Mark, this guy was sixth in MVP voting this year. 25 points, 13 rebounds. So I would expect him to have a little bit more of an increased role in the next two and a half exhibition games because all you've got inside right now is Tyson Chandler unless you just want to go small with the small forwards up front. Ben Sabansu knocked down the first free throw. Carmelo tipped it, kept it alive for Iguodala. United States leading by five as we approach two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Little zone still. They're in that zone. Carmelo Anthony off the nice feed. You know what I like about this? They're not jacking jump shots versus the zone. They're really looking to try to exploit the paint. And Sabansu as Great Britain plays inside out now. Working against Carmelo Anthony. Nice step through move and a foul going to be called. Against Carmelo, much to his dismay. And you see Pops with a lot of head fakes. Gets Carmelo off balance a little bit. You mentioned parts of four seasons in the NBA and now playing in Turkey. Hey, folks, watch all the NBA Summer League action with Summer League Broadband. Now for only $4.99, watch live Summer League games on your computer or your mobile device. Go to NBA.com backslash SLBB to learn more. See Lou Deng uh, going to get a breather. He's done a great job representing Great Britain basketball over the last couple of years, and a lot of his personal efforts have culminated in this team bearing, being where it is right now. I'm looking to make their first appearance in the Olympics in 64 years. Ben Gordon was thought to be yeah. a member of this team at one point, too. Tried to recruit him. Didn't quite work out. Now they were very close to getting Ben Gordon to say yes. Of course, Byron Mullins, the Charlotte Bobcats, uh, also could have been on this roster and could have used his sides and scoring. He's averaging 21 and 6 in the early going in the Las Vegas Summer League. If you're Chris Finch right now, the head coach of Great Britain, friend, you've know, you got to be pretty happy with the way things are going, right? I would agree. And you mentioned, you know, they've, they've played some of the better teams in the world tough and coming off two wins over Portugal. That pass intended for Iguodal. I think he was looking for the lob, and Chris Paul throwing him a bounce pass. That's just the second turnover for the United States. That would indicate better offensive efficiency? Well, I think so. And, uh, you know, I, I, like, I just like the idea against the zone that they're, they're really looking to go inside and not just settling for those jump shots. That's going to be a foul against Chris Paul, who was dogging Chris, pardon me, Kyle Johnson up court. Kyle Johnson, another one of those guys that played his college ball in the United States at LIU. He's a former Blackbird. Helped take that team to the NCAA tournament in 2011. He's going to go to the free throw line now for any. He began his professional career in Greece. Now playing in Cyprus. Knocks down the first of two. 
Johnson had a big game in that win against Portugal a few nights ago. He had 21 points and a couple of rebounds for Great Britain. You know, Great Britain has heard all the snickers and the, the whispers about, yeah, you're only in this Olympic competition because you're the host nation, but they're very prepared and very confident about yeah. representing themselves well. Well, that was very controversial because FIBA was very concerned that Great Britain had never put the time and effort into developing a national basketball program. Carmelo with oh. the slam. That's another great dime that time by Chris Paul. And I just love the fact that they're really looking to take that ball to the heart of the zone and not, not settling again. That's good ball movement. And they get another turnover, a three on one. Paul Westbrook with the slam, showtime. Mark, we said that the catalyst for Team USA's offense would be the pressure defense on the perimeter. No shot blockers in the game right now. They're using their speed and skill defensively. That's going to be a foul against the United States. And, friend, we watched practice out in Las Vegas at training camp a couple of sessions. And there were some times when they turned up the, the defensive heat against the select team. It was awe-inspiring to no watch. No question. There's a great look inside, and, and this alley-oop comes off of a steal, and you see they get those easy run-out baskets off that pressure defense on the perimeter. We've seen it in each of the first two exhibition games, and we're seeing a little bit more of it tonight. The USA have made their last eight shots in a row. Dan Clark at the free-throw line, 23-year-old, presently playing in the ACB in Spain. Carmelo in rhythm for the three, knocks it down, and it's a 10-point USA lead. I'm telling you, Mark, when you get easy baskets at the rim and your team starts to get some confidence, the Jays flow a little bit easier. There's less pressure on you to make those, but they're in rhythm right now. That jumper a little bit long by Renking. And now they're going to go for one shot. CP3 out top. Spread the floor for him. Now the ball screen. Carmelo in rhythm again, and another three ball. Carmelo Anthony of the United States coming off the bench tonight and catching fire. He has 10 quick points. Makes you wonder what they're thinking at the old Wellington Inn right now. They're thinking that bloke can shoot it pretty good. Back <laughs> with more after this. along with Fran Fraschilla. Carmelo Anthony leading the way for the United States with 10 points on a couple of three balls. LeBron the leading rebounder and Russell Westbrook a big catalyst as well. Fran they started two of nine from the field and have made their last 10 in a row. Why? Well I, I think when you get easy baskets Mark off your defense or get out and run in transition you don't squeeze the trigger on the jump shot just as tightly. You get to be in a little bit more flow. There's a little run and jump trap right there by USA out of the timeout, utilizing that quickness again. Andrew Lawrence getting an education right there, yeah. and Carmelo with his 12 point right there. See, I like this. You've got great defensive players on the floor right now. You've got Iguodala, Westbrook. Look at this pressure. Boy, they're really heating up Great Britain. Kevin Love, that's his third personal. And for a guy trying to stay on the court and get a little bit more playing time, that works against him. You know, we mentioned this a couple times during the first two exhibition games. Iguodala, Chandler, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and Chris Paul have all been first team, all defensive team in the NBA. So Coach K has got some weapons at his disposal in terms of turning up the pressure. James Harden comes into the ball game for the United States. James Harden out of Arizona State across the way has a former teammate, Eric Boateng of Great Britain, who hasn't gotten on the court yet. Yep, they had great success together at uh, Sun Devil Land. The United States has made 11 consecutive shots from the field. And now leading by 15. It's been all about the pressure defense on the perimeter, Mark. When you talk about how you're going to handle the Gasol brothers of Spain or Skoller of Argentina, it's going to be the pressure on the perimeter that does the job of keeping the ball from getting deep into paint. And, friend, while you're on 
the topic of Spain. Ricky Rubio not in the backcourt for them. Is it a situation where the United States might be able to wear them down? Or what are well, the possibilities I, of that happening? I don't think so. You know, as good a player as Ricky Rubio was first part of last season in the NBA, remember, he was just a role player for the Spanish national team. You're still talking about Calderon and, Calderon and, and Navarro, Sergio Yule, Victor Sada. Very experienced backcourt, Mark. Russell Westbrook with an offensive rebound. Why not? Rattles in and out. Under nine minutes to go here in the first half. Mensa Bonsu turns it over. And that is lethal trouble for opponents of the United States. A slam at the other end by James Harden. The reigning sixth man of the year in the NBA. A 14 to nothing run for the United States. Remember what we said early, Mark, it would be the backcourt pressure that would really get to Great Britain. And it has. Tough step back jumper by Dang off the mark. And Iguodala on the move and a foul in the open court. There's some very good players and recognizable names that you'll see in these Olympics. Time out on the floor. We'll take one right along with them. A look at Royal Litham St. Anne about 50 minutes away. Changed precipitously going back to 2004 when the program, even 2002, friend, for Shillam, bottomed out. Right. Losing the World Championships of Basketball in 2002 in Indianapolis, finishing sixth, and then to the point where Jerry Colangelo took over, brought in Mike Krzyzewski as coach. They've gone 51 and 1 since. Right. It sounds trite when you say changing the culture, but it's exactly what he did. He, he made it important for NBA players to want to play. In events like the Olympics and the World Championships, he made it cool again to want to represent Team USA, and it's worked out uh, to near perfection. Off the lob and a nice conversion by Luol Deng off the feed, and now we finally get a look at uh, number 14 in the USA jersey, Anthony Davis, the Collegiate Player of the Year out of the University of Kentucky, seeing his first minutes in a game. And also notice former uh, Illini Robert Archibald on the floor for Great Britain. And there's another former Illini, Darren Williams, knocking down the long-range jumper. And he has five. Clark's jumper is good from downtown. Daniel Clark, a young big man you mentioned. He's one of the two guys on the roster that did not play college basketball, signed a professional contract, and has been playing uh, in the prime of his career in the Spanish ACB League. That's going to be an offensive foul against the United States. Fouls against Andre Iguodala, his first personal foul. They say that uh, FIBA basketball is a little bit more physical, Fran. Here's evidence, I guess. Oh, perfect example. We saw the other night in that Brazil-USA game, it was turning into a wrestling match. Some sharp elbows yeah. that night. It's a quality sumo. 14-point advantage for the United States. Adek Boye bringing it up court against Darren Williams. Young man that played his basketball at St. Bonaventure. Lu Deng forces one up but draws the foul from Anthony Davis. Actually, they're going to call it against James Harden now. They're both in the neighborhood. You know, Mike Krzyzewski, very familiar with Lu Deng. Recruited him out of Blair Academy. Very fond of this guy who's averaged about 16 points a game in his NBA career. In fact, he made his first All-Star game this year, Mark. He was able to avoid most of the regular injuries that he experienced during the previous seasons and stay healthy, albeit for a thumb injury for parts of the year. But Lou Deng has uh, really been a cornerstone of building this Great Britain basketball program to the point where it is right now. Well, you make that great point because at some point towards the end of the season for the Bulls, there were people that thought he might want to shut his season down because of the thumb and the wrist. And he elected not only to finish the season, but he's also told the Chicago Bulls he was going to play in the Olympics. And Coach Tom Thibodeau, I, I think, uh, felt it was good for Lou to do that. Very important to him. Been a point of contention of late as to whether professionals and what age of those pros should be playing in the Olympic Games. There's a 23 and under proposal being considered right now. That's going to be a foul on the long range jumper by Harden with. Two quick fouls now by him. 
Well, back to Lou Dang, you know, his journey personally, even more so than professionally, is a real compelling and even inspiring one. Born in what is now the country of South Sudan, fled to Egypt and later to the United Kingdom. Calls Great Britain home, recently getting his immigration papers, his citizenship papers, attending Blair Academy in New Jersey, former All-American. Really a citizen of the world, he likes to think of himself, and really is. I would think so. You know, he was a McDonald's All-American in 2003, and his teammate at Blair Academy, Charlie Villanueva, was as well. In fact, Blair has three guys in the NBA right now with Royale Ivy. Gang makes the free throw. Great Britain down by only 11 points at this point. You see Chris Finch, a native of Reading, Pennsylvania. You mentioned he played at Franklin and Marshall for very successful Division III coach Glenn Robinson. Had a terrific career. And you know he's a journeyman coach, Mark. He played in Britain. Then he coached there. He somehow hooked up with the D-League. Won a championship with the uh, Rio Grande Valley Vipers. I know you follow yeah. the Vipers. And I got all the gear. Yeah. Terrell Harris of the Miami Heat. Former member came, of that team. Yeah, came up the hard way. Paul McKeskey, a lot of NBA people might recognize that name. He's a member of that coaching staff for Great Britain as well right yeah. now. And LeBron don't... James back <laughs> in the ball game. Nine-point contest. And that's going to be a foul out top <laughs> against Joel Freeland. <laughs> oh. Pardon me. Archibald. Archibald. Yeah. Did somebody say, watch that elbow? <laughs> Archibald played for four NBA teams after finishing his career for Lon Kruger at Illinois. He... On the switch, Archibald guarding Williams. What a Whoa. dime by Darren Williams. <laughs> Durant couldn't finish at the rim. Back comes Britton. And the three ball way short. LeBron in transition. When LeBron gets that full head of steam going, it can be <laughs> trouble for opponents. Foul called at number 20. Well, there you go. You mentioned the coaches, Nick Nurse, who coached the Iowa Energy and now at Rio Grande Valley, Paul McKeskey in the D-League. These guys have come up the hard way, you'd say, and you continue to see the, the crossover effect, Fran, when you look at them being the, uh, having the NBA influence, the, the lines have truly been blurred for the better, you would think. Oh, no question about it. It used to be a time where a college player could go over to Europe and really have a great career, but... You just can't walk into a really good lineup of a good team in Spain or Italy or Greece right now and step on the floor. That's going to be an offensive foul against Mensa Bonsu. Much to his displeasure, that's going to be his second personal. Looked like uh, Kobe <laughs> pulled the chair out from under him. Exactly. Somewhere Scott Van Pelt is upset about that because he is, of course, a one of Pops' biggest supporters on those slam dunks he used to have nightly on SportsCenter. That must be that Maryland uh, <laughs> George Washington uh, connection. Kobe into the paint. Tried to manufacture one, gets it to Davis, and Davis is fouled underneath by Archibald. Anthony Davis going to go to the free throw line, the number one pick in the NBA draft of the New Orleans Hornets. And he was supposed to be in camp a little bit earlier, friend, but... He was only brought in when Blake Griffin suffered his knee injury. There's one more look at that foul against Pops Mensa Bonsu, but back to Anthony Davis. He was told to hang around just in case of an injury, and it came to fruition when Blake Griffin was injured. Yeah, it's kind of ironic because, as you know, Anthony Davis hurt his ankle in his initial workouts with the New Orleans Hornets, so when we saw him out in Las Vegas at training camp, he really wasn't 100%, but he seems like we've seen him move well since then and he's going to get an unbelievable opportunity to represent the United States in the Olympics and probably will be a linchpin mark I would think of uh, an Olympic team in the future maybe as early as 2016. Ten point ball game approaching five minutes to go here in the first half USA on its third game of its pre Olympic tour Mensa Bonsu inside fouled. And he earns a trip to the free throw line. This is a gritty performance so far friend by Great Britain. Their head coach Finch said that, hey, we might be a little bit awestruck at the beginning, but after a few minutes, we should be okay, and it's really come to pass so far. When you think about it, you've got an NBA All-Star in Dang. You've got guys like Archibald and Mensa Bonsu who have played in the league. Freeland is 25. He'll be playing in the NBA this year. 
So the front line, I think, is pretty solid. Where they've been hurt so far in the first half is the inability to consistently take care of the basketball on the perimeter because of that tremendous USA heat. Surprised that we haven't seen as much zone as we thought we might see from a USA opponent? No, I don't think so because, again, Mark, this is an exhibition game. So, you know, if Team Great Britain, remember, Team Great Britain, if they get to the knockout round, there's a good chance it'll be in fourth place on the B side, which means they'll see Team USA in the quarterfinals. So why give away everything? Right. Davis quickly up court to Durant. No doubt about that one for KD. The Durantula extending those tentacles, and he's got nine. You know, Team USA has done a good job tonight of getting out and running and heading towards that half-century mark. Dang with the jumper. Contested well that time by both Durant and Davis. James back to Kobe, thought about it. Bryant tried to dish it off to Davis again and was fouled on his foray to the bucket. Here's a look at uh, Pool B, Spain, Australia, Great Britain, along with Brazil, Russia, and China. You'd have to think that Great Britain, China, and Australia will fight for the fourth spot in the B pool, Mark, which would mean that the likelihood is Great Britain and Team USA could meet again in the quarterfinals. So from a coaching standpoint, even though Great Britain, Britain would be a decided underdog, why show all your cards in a game like this? Maybe they will play more zone when they get to the uh, the Olympic Games, but uh, you know, no reason really to bring it out too much. We saw it a little bit, a few possessions. And we looked at Pool B there, friend. What about the fact that Australia has played two friendlies against Spain and come close on both occasions, losing by single digits, six points? I watched part of that second game last night, and uh, you know they're doing it without Andrew Bogut. And I, I, I do think, again, like we've talked about a number, a number of times, these coaches are very canny and crafty. They're not, that's, they they want to win these exhibition games, but they also want to make sure they get a lot of people playing time. They really treat it like the NBA preseason in many ways. So you got to be cautious when you look at the scores. Kobe missed the second foul shot. It's a 12-point lead for the United States. Freeland. LeBron knocks it loose. That's the tenth turnover. Carmelo has been in rhythm. This time misses, though. And back comes Ranking. Right to Pops Mensa Bonsu, and he's fouled. Ball came right to him off the deflection. And Pops is going to go to the free throw line. Fran, this is a high scoring first half, a little bit higher than you expected, maybe? Or uh, not? No, not no. really. You know, I thought Team USA would be able to pressure Great Britain, but Great Britain, give them credit. They've come back and pushed the tempo as well and gotten some easy baskets. The United States, of course, only had 80 points in that game against Brazil on Monday night in Washington, D.C. And Sabansu knocks down the first free throw, the lead down to 11 points. They're expecting a sellout crowd of close to 18,000 at Manchester Arena. I remember when Pops was at George Washington as a colonial back in 2005, 2006. He actually got his team into the top 10 during the regular season. They were a team on fire and he got to the second round of the NCAA tournament. He went undrafted, Mark, but ended up in the NBA for a couple of years, now making a very nice living in Europe. Chris Paul off the screen to LeBron, posted up against Mensa Bonsu. Underneath to LeBron, double teamed. See, Carmelo needs to get out of the lane because they could really spread the floor if they can get four out and wide. See, Carmelo's hanging in the post area. See, he's better out there in pick and roll. Chris Paul. That's it. See that? Just as called, LeBron with yep. a sweet finish. Great ball movement by the United it's States. It's much harder to guard Team USA when they put four on the perimeter and keep one inside. If Carmelo's going to sneak inside along with James, it's going to clog the lane up, Mark. And that's where Team USA has really made an adjustment to international basketball. You see their four out again. Look at the spacing. And Kevin Durant stepped out of bounds. That's the fifth turnover of the first half but the United States friend with 14 assists so far on 
17 field goals. What does that tell you about uh, the way I, they're I, running it? I think it's great. I think we've talked about it time and again. All these guys can score the ball, but at times they're almost unselfish to a fault because they want to let their teammates know they're willing to share the sugar. Under three minutes to go now in a 12-point USA lead. Now, one of the things that uh, international basketball has really brought to the NBA and college basketball, Mark, is that idea of spread, pick, and roll. Mike D'Antoni with the Suns, then the Knicks. When you go four out and pick and roll, it really opens up the floor. Good hustle by the great British team. Dang inside, tipped up. Out of bounds and Great Britain basketball underneath. Home team battling here. Well, it's interesting. We talked about that controversy earlier about FIBA not really wanting Great Britain to be the 12th team in the Olympic Games unless they showed a commitment to building this program. And I think the first half would be a pretty good resume for Great Britain's basketball program that they are indeed improving. They could send that tape in. Mensa Bonsu against Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo knocked it away. And here's LeBron. Nice dish to Durant for the slam. Boy, they get to the other end real quick. Absolutely. And that's why that pressure perimeter defense is going to be so important for Team USA because it really initiates their offense in the open court. They get those hands in the passing lane. Carmelo and LeBron with another slam. 2.12 to go. And Chris Finch calls timeout for Great Britain because of the 6-0 USA run. Outside the Exchange Theater in Manchester. Back with more after this. We're chopping it up. Manchester Arena, look at the Burger King upcoming schedule. On the 22nd, USA will take on Argentina from Barcelona. That game at midnight Eastern, then on the 24th, they wrap up their pre-Olympic schedule taking on Spain from Barcelona at 4.30 Eastern time. Both those games are going to be on ESPN2, and then they tip it off for real on July 29th. How about the New York Knicks signing veteran guard uh, Pablo Prigioni? Yes, uh, the day. Yep, the Argentine uh, point guard who's been a professional now for almost 20, 20 years. Well into his 30s, friend. What do you make of that signing? I, I strange at this point yeah, in his career? I thought so. It would be interesting to see why uh, why he'd want to come over and why the Knicks would want to sign him. But if Jay Kidd keeps driving like that, he, they might need another point guard. Well, it's certainly an, an older backcourt as Durant goes to the bucket off the nice feed. And the United States really starting to get in rhythm. They are shooting 56% from the field. That number continuing to climb. Durant going to the foul line. Remember, Kevin Durant was the leading scorer against the Dominican Republic in their first exhibition game. Three-time NBA scoring champ has 11 in this contest. And uh, he was telling me earlier that playing USA basketball is a great bomb, an elixir for getting over the disappointment of losing in the NBA Finals in five games to the Miami Heat. Except that you have to look at LeBron James every day. <laughs> Well, he's got a couple other teammates with him, so they yeah. can gang up on LeBron. Of course, Dwayne Wade was supposed to be with this Olympic team, but underwent knee surgery in the wake of the championship and is going to be back and ready in uniform for the United States for training camp. Durant. Durant knocks down two, and the lead is at 18 points. Largest lead of the night for the United States. About one and a half to go here in the first half. Lou Dang with an open look from downtown, knocks down the three ball. Good execution, solid ball movement right there. They took care of it and got their best player the open look. Dang with 15. Chris Paul knocks one down from the elbow. But Chris Paul, after getting off to a slow start, friend in training camp, he injured his thumb on his shooting hand. You can still see the wrap on that thumb. Had to sit out a bunch of practices, but has really gotten into rhythm over the last three or four days. 
Well, you remember how those first few practices were disjointed for Mike Krzyzewski because Darren Williams was waiting on signing his deal with the with the Nets and then Blake Griffin was injured. Paul was sitting out. And that's going to be a charging foul against the United States. Hey folks coming up on the USA basketball halftime report presented by State Farm Jalen Rose in the studio along with Cindy Brunson with his first half analysis and Tiger in contention just across the way at the Open Championship. He went three under par today. Playing that uh, link style of golf friend. Uh, be nice if we got a chance to get out there a little bit off the rebound. That's going to be a push underneath against Carmelo Anthony. That's his second personal foul. Of course was scoring well today. The rain softened the, the greens. Some of those guys were playing target golf early in the day. Adam Scott six under the Aussie. You don't want to get in those sand traps. No you don't with the rough. <laughs> <laughs> I get them also in the rough. People wouldn't even know where I was. The sand traps in Great Britain are a different breed. 17 point lead pops Mensa Bonsu. He's been with a host of NBA teams including the Hornets most recently started his journey with the Mavericks played a little bit for the Rockets. The Toronto Raptors first stint. Now uh, doing his thing in Turkey. Kieran one seconds to go in the first half. Yeah, Kieran Achar in the game former Duquesne Duke. Another one of those young guys from Great Britain who played his college basketball in the United States for Danny Nee at Duquesne. About a seven second difference. Is there a two for one situation that you run in too late. national basketball? Yeah, could have could have got one up, but uh, too late. No, they'll, they'll get the first good shot. Probably be spread pick and roll right here. About a six second difference between the game and shot clock. Here's Chris Paul. Lobs it up. He had Russell Westbrook on the takeoff path, but Westbrook was uh, impeded in his progress, and there's going to be a foul called against Great Britain. It's interesting Mark you've heard me talk about spread pick and roll a lot in the first half and Team USA tailor made for that Spain in the last couple of years with the Gasol brothers playing together at the same time have actually had to adjust their offense and go to a more of an NBA traditional two post offense mm. and so I don't think they've been they're still a great team but they're not as effective offensively at times because the court gets really shrunk when you play the two big guys. Great problem to have though right. It is a great problem <laughs> to have but it, it you have to make an adjustment. You know if your coach uh, Sergio Scariolo the coach of Spain and he has. Of course it was the United States defeating Spain in the finals in 2008 and what some people are calling maybe the greatest Olympic final of all time. Eleven seconds to go. 18 point lead for the United States. Here's Lawrence out of the College of Charleston. And another turnover. It'll count if it goes. Now Westbrook had a chance. But a good end to the first half for the United States on a 12 to 4 run over the last four minutes. Please stay in your seats. Well, when we come back, we'll go to the studio. With Cindy Brunson for the USA Basketball Halftime Report presented by State Farm. A look at the print works outside here in Manchester, England. USA leading at the break. Team presented by Nike Plus. Manchester England and game number three of the pre Olympic tour for the United States. Let's take a look at our Metro PCS first half statistics. Mark Jones along with Fran Frischilla. Fran, when you look at the numbers for the United States, which ones jump off the page at you here in the first well, half? Steals, obviously, Mark, because they led to easy baskets for Team USA and then assists. Team USA had 20 field goals in the first half. They were assisting on 18 of them. The ball movement was outstanding. Points in the paint. They got the ball inside. Even though they don't have that pure low post score, 
They attack the rim with uh, very good efficiency. Why do you think they've been able to uh, move the ball better than they did in the previous game against uh, against uh, Well, I think, you know, part of it is obviously the competition, but I, I just think there's been a concerted effort instead of just settling for jump shots of attacking the rim, but it really did start with their defensive intensity because it led it to easy baskets like the uh, the Russell Westbrook run out. And there you see that attack against the zone. Did a nice job of not settling for long range shots, but rather get them in the flow of the game. Our State Farm with a better state highlights. Carmelo Anthony with the slam dunk. As we get set for the start of the third period here. You can see the intensity level. Coach K making sure that uh, Team USA comes out early, pressures the basketball. Mensa Bonsu had a good first half for Great Britain. He had 12 points. Nice pass underneath to Deng for the layup. Deng has 17 now. Those two guys, friend, are pretty much going to be uh, who Great Britain hanged their head on, uh, right? No question about it. Two, they're, they're, they're two mainstays. Kevin Durant got caught watching the paint dry. Darren Williams with an athletic, dynamic move inside and finishing the layup. Williams, of course, got the start today at point guard in place of Chris Paul. Kevin Durant got the start in place of Carmelo Anthony. That's going to be a foul against Durant. That's his third personal first team foul of the second half. Kevin Durant's had his hands full today with Lou Aldang, as you see Darren Williams. Talk to Chris Collins, one of the members of the coaching staff, former Duke great. He said that Coach K feels they have seven starters, including Williams and Durant. So he shook up the lineup today. What do you think makes Coach K go with either Durant and Williams versus Mello and Paul? Is it a size thing, a speed no, thing, matchups? You know, I, I, don't, I, I don't think there's any one thing in particular, although let's face it, in that first quarter against Brazil, the defensive effort uh, was uh, left much to be desired, and that could have been a reason for the change. Deng with the pull-up. Great Britain with the rebound. Freeland kicks it back out, and the pass picked off by Kobe Bryant. Good defense by the United States. Now in transition. Yeah, this is not a great debut today for Joel Freeland, the uh, Portland Trailblazers number one pick in 2006. Kobe working against Ren King. Bryant into the lane, raising up, and just a little bit short. Kobe just one of three from the field in this game. Freeland over the shorter Darren Williams for the bucket. That's his fourth point. Now well, he's 6'11", 250, only 25 years old. And he had the mismatch on Williams inside, took advantage of it. You know, today you're watching him trying to guard guys like James and Durant. That won't happen during the season. Freeland is a power player. He'll do his uh, work inside if he gets an opportunity to make that Portland Trailblazer rotation. Darren Williams knocking down the three. Williams, as much as anyone else, was really looking forward to playing for the United States national team. Had to sit out the early part of training camp while his uh, contract status was decided. Good defensive play by Tyson Chandler. Knocked it away from Mensa Bonsu. But Darren told me that, hey, I haven't played since... Uh, a real game since April the 26th. I'm ready to go. As is Chandler, their friend. Um, Pops Mensa Bonsu had the mismatch on the perimeter. It is the largest lead of the game for the United States. Freeland rejected at the rim by Chandler, his second block of the game. And the conversion at the other end by the United States, Williams. And the lead now swelling to 22 points. Well, they still have a reminder of an inside presence there with Chandler, the reigning defensive player of the year in the NBA. Freeland contested. And Mensa Bonsu runs down the loose ball for three. Durant with the rebound. Williams feeling it. Heat check. And he's still burning up. Uh, he's getting a lot of it in transition off a good, solid defense and rebounding 
by Team USA, and he's in rhythm. Darren Williams was all 11 points for the United States in the third quarter. They've blown it wide open. Say men's national team. Presented by Nike Plus. United States leading Great Britain. And don't forget that second round action is Friday at the early wee hours in the morning, 4.30 Eastern time. Tiger Woods right in the middle of the hunt. Finished up at three under par after the first round. Adam Scott, the leader. And back to the action. Mark Jones along with Fran Fraschilla. This is the biggest lead of the ball game for the United States. 25 points, courtesy of Darren Williams, who got the start in this ball game. And U.S. comes up with another steal. Oh, boy. I'm not sure that Manu Bowl could have gotten that one. <laughs> that was way up. Might have been tipped. Well, the trail official at midcourt had a good view of it and came in and rectified the mistake. Good teamwork. LeBron bounced it off Freeland and got the bucket. He got him on the okie doke move. <laughs> Freeland, nice wheel on the baseline. Go. Little payback at the other end. Now it took a while to get on track for the 25-year-old. But a good spin move and a finish right here on Duran. Portland Trailblazer Franz Fran will be happy to see that. Maybe a yeah. member of the Blazers after playing the last seven years in Spain. Williams is oh, burning boy. up. 14 points in the third quarter. Taking advantage of that first start. And Coach, Gay, Coach K gave him. He's one of those guys who's been part of this national team since a 22-year-old in 2006. Played in 08. That yeah, really underscores the great continuity that Coach K has established with the program. Andrew Lawrence, meanwhile, knocking down the three ball. He's going to be a senior next year at the College of Charleston. Played for Bobby Cremens, who coached his dad, Ronaldo. Oh, and Ronaldo out of Orangeburg, South Carolina, after his Appalachian State career as LeBron finishes. Played in Europe, met his wife in Great Britain, and Andrew Lawrence Getting a chance to play against the United States. LeBron James for two. Whistle and a, that's going to be a traveling violation against Lou Deng. And Andrew Lawrence, a 6'3 senior to be, rising senior at the College of Charleston. A member of the Olympic team. What a great memory he's going to have taking home when school starts in Charleston, South Carolina. In, it's going to be late big, August. Big man on campus down there. Oh. Down on King Street in Charleston. I know you like you like that area. Yeah, great uh, historic district. Darren oh. Williams. LeBron, oh my, he brought the heat. Uh, great Britain showing a little bit of zone, but once again, Team USA not settling for jump shots versus the zone. And well, Fred, they've got one of the great zone offensive minds on that bench with Jim Beheim. Jim Beheim, right? well, we jokingly told Jim he's a good cheerleader on this Team <laughs> USA team because they're not going to play any zone defense. Oh, man. LeBron missed that one. Carmelo cleans it up with a long two. And this game has been blown wide open. 31-point advantage for the United States. Now, the one area of concern for Great Britain was in the backcourt, and they've really forced, Team USA has really forced some turnovers and really forced the tempo. Kobe Bryant uh, to nobody in particular that time. Lawrence with a three, and Andrew Lawrence with another jumper. Once again, great ball movement by the United States. And LeBron didn't miss that dunk. You know, friend, there's a there's a scouting report. There's a perception always out there that if you if you zone the United States, you can slow them down and give them problems. Well, you can if you settle, if you're Team USA and you settle just for shooting jump shots. I always felt as a coach, the way to negate a zone is to attack it from the paint out. And Team USA has done a very good job of that today. They'll see a lot of zone in the Olympics. Trust me. And they've worked well against zone defenses in the last two major competitions. The World Championships most recently and in the 08 Olympics. Carmelo that time 
with another three. Once again, Mark, psychologically, when you're getting your running game going, getting easy baskets, the jumpers flow easier, too. And one by Lou Deng. Now, Lou Deng, first time All Star for the Chicago Bulls, trying to keep Great Britain in it. I don't think the final score is going to be indicative of the kind of pride he has in representing his country today. Been a long journey for Great Britain to make it to this point. And qualifying in, in Eurobasket and, and making it to the Olympics, Fran, is really a tough road. Uh, that European zone is a very competitive one. There's no question. The, the, the most depth in international basketball is obviously in Europe. You think of all the great basketball countries like Lithuania and Spain and Greece, France now with a number of NBA players. 30-point lead by the United States, just under three minutes to go. Our good friend David Blatt, what he does with the Russian national team. Foul against Archibald. Of course, in the FIBA Americas District, uh, some pretty competitive teams with the United States, of course, and Argentina and Brazil not that far behind. Well, I mentioned Brazil as a dark horse for a medal, and I got to tell you, Russia with uh, Andre Kirilenko, is playing some of the best basketball of his career right now for Russia. Well coached. I played his basketball for Cheska Moscow this past year, right? Yes, he did. Here's Deng. Boy, you've got to be real careful with the ball. United States players with those active hands. Here's Chris Paul. Mismatch against the bigger Atara. Paul unable to convert. Approaching two minutes to go here in the third quarter. It's all United States at this point. Dang, missing the layup. And the crowd at the Manchester Arena here at times have been a little bit silent. That may be a function of the fact that they're still learning the sport of basketball. There's some of the nuances, and I say this with all due respect, the nuances of the game are still something that they're learning. And that's why this is such a big Olympics for the British Basketball Federation. Very similar to people in the United States getting accustomed to the sport of soccer or football as it's known around the world. And I think you're absolutely right. Of course, we're in one of the great soccer cities in the world in Manchester. You look at the great tradition here of Man U at Old Trafford and of course I'm a Manchester City guy. Exactly. I'm still waiting for that <laughs> Mario Balotelli sighting in the arena somewhere, or even their great manager, Roberto Mancini. A 30-point advantage for the United States in the meantime and in between time. Archibald, meanwhile, has fouled out of the ball game for Great Britain. That's going to be an offensive foul against Russell Westbrook. Foul quarter number seven. Good opportunity Russell today for Westbrook. Coach K to get a a lot of players, some minutes. We'll see Anthony Davis in the fourth quarter, I'm sure. Kevin Love's been in foul trouble today, so he's back in the lineup. Andrew Lawrence, uh, life or death to get that ball over midcourt against Russell Westbrook. It's always an adventure when Westbrook is guarding someone. Safe to say, Andrew Lawrence will not see anybody in the Southern Conference this season for... With that kind of ball pressure? With that kind of ball pressure. We've already seen what Russell Westbrook's capable of doing. That fouls against Kevin Love already his fourth. This has been a tough night for Kevin Love, the three-point shooting champion at All-Star Weekend this year in the NBA. A real double-double machine for the Timberwolves. Lawrence had his shot punched inside. And the United States with numbers, a three-on-one. Boy, they lobbed it up for both Love and Iguodala. <laughs> Waited for it to come down. There's Johnson. Achar on the wing. Three-pointer good by Kyle Johnson. Johnson, remember, had that big game against Portugal in that victory by Great Britain. Westbrook to Carmelo Anthony. 
Kevin Love still looking to find his rhythm in the ball game, and he really seems a little bit out of sorts tonight. No, I, I totally agree with you. And I was expecting big things from him tonight. I thought he'd get a lot of minutes. Lawrence gets blitzed on the two-man game. And he commits the foul. They've really speeded him up and gotten him to turn it over a few times. You know, we mentioned Joel Freeland, and there'll be a real international flavor in Portland this year for Neil O'Shea and the Trailblazers with Nick Batum. Uh, Portland matched the Minnesota Timberwolves offer, so the Frenchman will be back in the lineup. He'll be on the French national team. Victor Claver from Spain, the first round pick of Portland in 2009, is signed for next season. Chris Paul with a nice ball fake there. Westbrook lets it fly and knocks down the three. The United States shooting the three at a pretty decent rate in this ball game. They started off five for seven, now nine of 16. Well, how about Damon Willard? He's off to a hot start in the summer league in Vegas. Yeah, showing up really well. Yep, 26 points a game in his first two games. Portland's first round pick. Achara with the miss. Iguodala still got a little time on the clock. Westbrook, great passing, and Anthony finishes right before the buzzer. The United States leading by a huge margin. A look at the fabled pitch. And some of the cogent points of the game so far, the numbers, a huge third quarter for Darren Williams with 14 points in the period. At one point, he had scored all 11 of their points to begin the third period. Lou Dang, 6 of 16 from the field. And the ball movement friend for the United States, boy, 29 assists on their field goals. That speaks all you got to say. No, I agree. Sharing the ball, everybody on this team, as we mentioned, almost everybody is a prime scorer on his NBA roster. Love inside with the slam, and maybe that'll get him going a little bit. Kevin Love, member of the Minnesota Timberwolves, they've got aspirations of making the playoffs and crashing the party soon. Of course, they're going to have to do it without Nick Batum whose offer sheet was matched by Portland. But Kevin Love recently saying that he expects his franchise to make the requisite moves to get them into the playoffs, uh, hinting that he's getting a little bit impatient. Mensa Bonsu inside. That's going to be a three-second violation against Great Britain. That's the 20th turnover for Great Britain. And back to Kevin Love, friend. Do you, do you think that being around guys who are in the playoffs a lot bothers during the him. summer bothers him a little, oh, little no residual question. no question about it there's no doubt about it he's he is starting to get frustrated you know they'll hopefully get Ricky Rubio R Ricky Rubio back at some point early in the NBA season Brandon Roy is now a member of the Minnesota Timberwolves as he stri strives to make a comeback from his debilitating knee injuries Westbrook fouled going to the basket I think if you're Coach K right now, you're two and a half, almost three games into the exhibition tour. And I wonder, Mark, if much like in 2008, he's trying to figure out whether he's going to be able to go with an eight-man roster, a lineup, a nine-man rotation. I think some way, you know the guy to me that's the, that, that's really the, the uh, underrated guy in this rotation might be Andre Iguodala. How so? Because he does so many little things. He's, he's proven already to be a terrific passer. He's making shots. His defense has been electric, and he provides you energy, and he does not need the ball to be effective on the court. Guys like that are always priceless when it comes to international basketball competition. Westbrook makes both free throws, and Kobe Bryant telling me a little bit earlier that he expects Russell Westbrook almost to provide the the Dwayne Wade type of role off the bench this year with his energy and I said as well as Wade did he said yeah he goes Westbrook is even he said by far Westbrook is the most athletic guy on this team that we have um, right on cue as he strips that ball Harden with the three tipped up no good and rebounded by the United States Anthony Davis now trying to get some meaningful minutes for himself Love saves the ball, but it goes to Andrew Lawrence. 
And that's going to be a foul against the United States. Anthony Davis in the ball game, along with Westbrook, Chris Paul, James Harden, and Kevin Love. There's Andrew Lawrence, who's going to be a senior next year at the College of Charleston. He's played in a lot of big games in his career for Bobby Kremens, and this year he'll play for Doug Wojcik, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of his greatest thrills today. A whistle and a holding foul underneath against the United States. That's going to go against Anthony Davis, his first personal foul. You talk about the United States potential rotation, whether Coach K goes 8 deep, 9, 12, whatever, friend. Where do you think Davis figures into the equation? Get a towel. Okay. Yeah. Wave it good? Get it, wave, <laughs> wave it well, I think. A red, white, uh, blue one? Yeah, no offense to Anthony. He's going to be a terrific player. Oh, there on cue, shows yep. some of his skill. But more than likely, uh, I think Coach K even said this at, at training camp when, they, when he got the word that Blake Griffin would not be a part of the roster, that uh, we don't want to have to rely on Anthony Davis. And yeah, good point. Out of bounds, it'll be USA Basketball. Anthony Davis, the player of the year in college basketball this past season, the first pick in the NBA draft by the New Orleans Hornets. I think the experience he's going to get being around all these NBA All-Stars, great players, is going to really rub off well on him, Mark, over the next two or three weeks. Hopefully he'll have a very successful rookie season, but certainly this is going to be a thrill for him and make his adjustment to the national team even easier in the future. Once you're in the pipeline, it works out. Kevin oh, Love man. on the reverse and the bench up, loving it. <laughs> You know, in training camp, they, they got on Kevin Love for not wanting to throw throw down some of these lobs. Take a look right here. That's not exactly uh, bad pass. But yeah, it's not, <laughs> that's not vintage Dr. J right there. But you saw a little bit of Kevin Love's athleticism. You know, I said it earlier, Mark, Kevin Love may actually be as underrated as a great player as there is in the league when you think about it because of all the things he does so well and being on a bad team. You don't really get a chance to appreciate what he does, but sixth in MVP voting, yeah. I think, speaks for itself. Yeah, Kevin Love, um, you know, we watch practice a lot, Fred. A lot of his teammates were not only getting on him for not throwing it down, but at times he was passing up too many shots, and he's a very good three-point shooter and perimeter shooter. His teammates are imploring him to let it fly a little bit more frequently. Anthony Davis with a tough fadeaway, no good. And saved by Great Bitten. Boateng up to Andrew Lawrence. Deng for three. And Lou Deng now with a pretty respectable 23-point performance. Williams. Here's Westbrook. Under seven minutes to go. There's the lob. Davis there finishes at the rim. Yep. You know, Russell Westbrook, last two possessions, has been trying to find Anthony Davis almost to get the young guy going a little bit. These are important minutes for Anthony Davis as he gets his feet wet. Williams. Harden for three. And James Harden trying to find his rhythm. Timeout. Timeout on the floor, and... The United States in control from Manchester Arena on a beautiful summer day. Presented by Nike Plus Basketball, Game On World. And in part by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Back everyone to the USA men's national team presented by Nike Plus. The United States in control 99 to 58 with 632 to go in the fourth quarter. This is the third game of their five game pre-Olympic tour. Up next in a couple of days you'll see them play Argentina followed by a showdown against uh, what many people perceive to be their top challenger for the gold Spain. Oh, Both those little. games will be on ESPN 2. Little NBA hammer action right there with that baseline drive and looking to kick it to the corner. Chris Finch, the head coach of Great Britain, assistant coach in Houston with Kevin McHale. 
Who knows who's going to be on that Houston roster with all those young players and draft picks and where will Dwight Howard end up? Where do you think he's going to end up? I eventually now reports saying that the Los Angeles Lakers are a landing spot for him and that Dwight is amenable to signing with them long term. But, uh, you know, it's it's really been a tough situation, not only for Dwight, for but for his entire family. Spoke with uh, Dwight Sr. recently and, uh, you know, they're all hoping for a, a, a great resolution for all parties. Really been one of the... Uh, that's Longest running strange scenarios. Soap operas yeah, in the spring NBA. and summer. Yep. So unfortunate. Harden missed the last three, finds the mark on this one. And we mentioned that Arizona State connection with Ike Diagu of Nigeria, Eric Botang of Great Britain, and James Harden, Sun Devils. Herb Sendek is going to be in attendance in London to watch his three former pupils as nice. Botang scores. It's a young man that started his career for Mike Krzyzewski at Duke, Mark. What about that? Just so, like uh, Lou Dang, huh? Just like Lou Dang. Eric was part of three straight 20-win seasons at Arizona State. Hey, folks, don't forget, coming up on Sunday, the United States will take on Argentina. Midnight Eastern time as LeBron, KD, and the crew take on Argentina, presented by Nike Plus, the U.S. men's national team. And uh, Argentina is really going back to, well, 2002, Fran, had a golden age of basketball. Where are they right now? Well, they're they're certainly on the they're they're certainly on the downhill slope of this great run, Mark. But they're wily and they're dangerous. And you talk about Ginobili as they missed that lob out of bounds, and you know the four the four starters minus their center Gutierrez, who's a good player. But all you know, you look at Ginobili and Scola, Nocioni, Prigioni. These guys are very experienced guys. Been a great run for that cast, and we'll get a good look at them on Sunday at midnight. You know, the best analogy is a guy like Andy Pettit or Mike Maddox, they may not be throwing as hard at the end of their career, but they're still wily enough to get you out. And Argentina very much in that mold of a team that could cause Team USA trouble. Time out on the floor. And one more look at Royal Litham and St. Anne's. Time now to take a look at the Cisco assist of the night in Fran Priscilla. When they cut Russell Westbrook's legs open, they're going to find springs inside. Well, this is the assist of the night, but credit Team USA. The ball movement's been outstanding all night long. And Russell Westbrook, I think you mentioned he could be part of that shock troop, shock troop second team that Coach K can rely on with maybe somebody like Iguodala off the bench. Who knows who? Who that mix will be with Carmelo not starting today and right. Durant stepping in. Darren Williams been outstanding. You think back to that championship game against Spain, Fran, and it's kind of a point that's been lost on a lot of people because he wasn't one of the real marquee, quote unquote, star guys. But Tayshawn Prince was a member of that 08 team that won gold in China, and he came in for just eight minutes, but had some of the most efficient time on the floor in Olympic history. He scored eight quick points, yes. went back to the bench, and sat down. Helped him win the gold, as you mentioned. Team USA in a zone right there. Nice block by Davis, starting the fast break, and Westbrook with another slam. It's a great confidence builder for the young man, the number one pick in the draft, Anthony Davis. I say quality minutes. They may not make quality minutes in terms of importance in the game, but they're quality minutes for him. And another Great Britain turnover. They're 24th of the game. If you're just joining us, Darren Williams started this game in place of Chris Paul. Anthony Davis denied at the rim that time, fouled by Eric Botang. Kevin Durant also got the start in place of Carmelo Anthony, and things seem to have worked out pretty well. Again, you see the excellent ball movement, the drive by Williams and Anthony Davis ending up on his back, but he had a smile on his yeah. face. 
friend, moving forward and looking at that Argentina game coming up that you'll see on ESPN2 Sunday night at midnight, do you think that Coach K goes with the same starting five with Carmelo and Chris Paul coming off the bench? Is it well? And, and starting it, I, I, think, and I think he likes the way the starting five today has to have played, Mark, because they, they showed great energy. Now, again, now he's, the coaching staff, the party line is they have seven starters. But that also might be a way of saying, hey, we have seven starters, so that's why we're going to start Darren Williams and Kevin Durant. Okay. You know, there's still some ego involved now. You coaches play with the language a little exactly. bit. Exactly, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's like a guy asked me, he, wanted, he was a power player, he wanted to play the shooting guard spot. And so first day of practice, I said, hey, you go inside. And he goes, well, I thought you said I was a shooting guard. I said, yeah, my shooting guard plays in the post. <laughs> Foul on the play against the United States. The oh. foul against Andre Iguodala. A little Villanova flavor here as Andrew Sullivan reports in. A young man who played at Villanova for Steve Lapis and Jay Wright. Played at St. Augustine's Prep down in South Jersey. Don't ask me why I know all this stuff. But <laughs> I think I tried to recruit him, actually. When I was at St. John's. That living room visit didn't do all that. No, we didn't, we didn't have a go visit, that well. But I, but I saw him quite a bit in high school. Under four minutes to go, a 40-point lead for the United States. On the verge of improving to 3-0 on their Olympic tour, the lob for Anthony Davis out of bounds from Kevin Love. That's only the ninth turnover of the game for the U.S., and that really underscores how well they've played and how efficient they've been, Fran, on offense but tonight. Agreed, and, and how little resistance, I think, Great Britain has given them defensively. Davis well. with a nice block, and Iguodala! Check that. That was Westbrook. You know, it's all been about ball movement tonight and unselfishness. Team USA has gotten out, but again, Great Britain has had something to do with it. Their poor passing and turnovers. Well, Russell Westbrook, and uh, here's another room service layup. Harden with the hammer. Team USA right now, Mark, just sitting back in a 2-3 zone. They're not trying to embarrass Great Britain, but... Great Britain now has emptied their bench, and they've been sloppy with the basketball. Sullivan makes the three. Russell Westbrook had a great NBA season and capped it off with an all-NBA selection and so much debate surrounding him as to whether he's a point guard, a scoring guard. He's just a basketball player, much like Anthony Davis. Showing his varied skill. Young guys fitting right in, and those veterans on the bench, happy to see Anthony Davis doing his thing. That was Iguodala. Well, they got the highlight tape rolling at full speed right now, and even the Brit, British crowd are enjoying it. I'm not sure the British players are. Here's Sullivan made the last three. Knocks down a pair. Under two minutes to go. Right now, if you're Chris Finch, you want that clock to run and get out of here. They've, they've gotten a couple things accomplished today, but for the most part, they've been outmatched. Well, he was expecting that. He said that coming into the game, that we're going to be a little bit awestruck to begin. Yep. And we should get over the stage fright, but... Just overwhelmed by the talent of the United States side. Boateng kicks out the rebound. And the jumper good. By Agde Boyo. See some of the British women's team watching. And a women's team led by Gino Oriema defeated Great Britain. We saw some of the men watching in attendance. Harden with the layup. And we've got a substitution coming into the game on the whistle. So now uh, Coach K on the verge of improving to 52 and 1 since taking over as head coach of the USA men's national team. That's one of those obscure rules in the last two minutes where you can sub if your team's been scored upon. Nice floater, a little bit strong by Agde Boye.
Davis with the block. I'm thinking back to the Dominican Republic game when Anthony Davis put on that USA uniform for the first time and the Dominican Republic coaching staff made up of Kentucky guys said, hey, you should be playing with us. <laughs> they almost confused the yeah, guy. Yeah, he, he was for a slight <laughs> moment. That's going to be a foul against Andre Iguodala. That's his third. The United States has shot the ball extremely well tonight. 60% from the field and 46% from downtown on 11 of 24 attempts. Well, this has been a good tune-up, Mark, but the next two games, they'll certainly get that tested. But keep in mind, and I've said this before, and I know if people have trouble believing me when I say this, but neither Argentina or Spain will show all their best stuff. And they'll play to win, but they won't play so desperately to win that they empty out all their strategy and tactics. So I'm sure Coach K will play it the same way. We haven't seen any switching from Team USA today. Something they do very well defensively. Boy, they got that lob thing down pat on the two-man game, the pick and roll. Davis finishes at the rim again, and uh, he's got a quick nine. Sullivan. Wow. Makes his third three-pointer here <laughs> late in the fourth quarter. 20 seconds to go. And Harden going to put this one on ice. The United States will improve to 3 0 on their tour. And 51 and 1 now. Make it 52 and 1 since Coach K took over as the head coach in 2006. Several players in double figures for the United States. Carmelo Anthony and Darren Williams leading the way with 19 apiece. Darren Williams with 14 points in that huge third quarter. Really got it started in the second half. Right? Yep, and I think you'd have to say that uh, Team USA, very efficient on offense, took, took uh, advantage of a number of Great Britain miscues. Ball movement was great. Team was shooting well. A good warm-up, a good tune-up, Mark, but certainly doesn't show you a lot about where Team USA needs to be by July 27th. Looking for their second consecutive Olympic gold medal. 118-78, the final score. Our next USA basketball broadcast is Sunday night at midnight on ESPN2 when the United States men's national team takes on Argentina from Barcelona, Spain. Coming up next, Numbers Never Lie, presented by Lexus. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Kevin Love finally got it going. For Fran Fraschilla and our entire crew, I'm Mark Jones saying goodbye, everybody, and good night from Manchester.